Good morning, folks. If you're watching Half Asleep, time to wake up. We've got continued solar eruptions, continued earth disruptions, some incredible news articles that came out overnight, which the world will take some time to recognize for being what they are. We will, of course, begin with the sun. The earth-facing quiet continues to dominate even as the sun finds itself in the midst of a major uptick. The eruptions haven't been from solar flares, though. They've been from releasing plasma filaments. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we're going to see the calm Earth-facing disk, a few bright spots of active regions, the obvious dark coronal holes, but what we saw at the end of the opening sequence is the main focal eruption of today. It disrupted the corona across a wide area to the south and, looking in tight, shows dense plasma ejecta heading into the heliosphere. Soho just barely updating thus far, but the ejecta does appear significant. Let's quickly look into the lack of solar flaring. Sunspots are small, magnetically spread, and not interacting. Split, and that's a recipe for no X-ray flares. We do have another one incoming at the limb. Appears to be alone as well. Let's look at 211 angstroms. The incoming coronal hole has another two days until it faces Earth up there, but the southern departing opening has been impacting us with solar wind. It continued overnight with intense streams and intermittent bursts of speedy blazing hot particles. The magnetic storms and disruptions continued at level one globally, but Karuna is showing a level four storm, second highest there is. Combined with those solar eruptions, we shouldn't be surprised that both of those tropical systems developed further. Northern Australia taking a pounding. How about this? It's from our electricity and plasma workshop in Georgia run by Billy Yelverton, Yelverton's lab. When the outstretching energies finally meet one another, there is a flash and briefly sustained current. This is, of course, important because we set it up to be like the ground and ionosphere in a lightning discharge and just waited for someone with a millisecond camera to catch Earth doing the same thing. Perhaps you'd also remember Kong Pop's talks from observing the frontier in Pittsburgh, including the Cladney plate showing resonance dictation of planetary positions and in including these images, except I didn't pull them from his talk, I pulled them from a brand new paper, which suggests exactly what the observers have been saying for a while now. A standing wave resonance caused by the central sun and its previous protostar dictate where the planets will form. In case you haven't noticed, the electric and wave-driven hypotheses for how this universe works are far simpler and require much less invented math than our current paradigm. Both Yelverton's lab and Kong Pop's talks, including all the other talks from Pitt Pittsburgh can be found at suspiciousobservers.org. Website members just click premium and both of those sections are in the top four list. It is just four dollars per month to become a member and apparently we're a couple years ahead of the curve. That's we as in all quarter million observers. Got pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. It's 420 a.m. in the Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe everyone. Oh,